Boy, do I have a show for you today. Uh, I'm going to talk about an early 1900 American Eagle Luger with ideal grips. And this gun has a real story to tell. So stay tuned. If you watch my channel, you know I uh, collect Lugers and Walthers. Most of my Lugers, however, are World War II era. These are early Lugers, and there's a lot of very complicated history to the Luger Test Eagles. Now, if you're a Luger collector, you know, you probably know about the Test Eagles. So you know there was a, at least a thousand of them sent to the Springfield Armory in, in 1902. The serial range was somewhere in about the 6100 to 7100 range. That's been documented, but it's also been disputed that there were, there are more on the front end, the back end. So th there's, there's disputes about the actual serial numbers, and the Springfield Armory did not keep record of the actual serial numbers. However, researchers later have figured out that there were three basic trials of test Lugers. To back up a little bit, as early as 1898, the U.S. Army was looking to adopt a semi-automatic pistol. Uh, they were using revolvers up until that point, and they began discussions. In fact, uh, here's some of the original documents. In 1898, we have some discussion about we'd like to test some Lugers. So we know that in March of 1901, remember these dates because they're important, there were two Lugers that were sent for testing. They were in set, uh, they were 30 caliber Luger, 7.65, but it's actually a 30 caliber Luger uh, bullet. Uh, two were sent to the Springfield Army, Armory for testing, and we have a little more information. We don't have serial numbers, but we do have more information. And then around September, a thousand of them came. Now, the thousand that came for testing, uh, a lot of them were used in service. A lot of them ended up in the Philippines. Uh, a lot of them were beat up. They're usually not in very con good condition. They have specific characteristics. The most easy to recognize are they have the American Eagle, uh, crest on the receiver and the other characteristic is they don't have the Germany mark so if uh, here's one of them in the test range and uh, by the way the Germany mark will usually have halos um, and so of those 1,000 uh, there's other characteristics but uh, very commonly known as the, they have the American Eagle and they are not Germany marked now why is that important well it's important because uh, any gun being imported into the United States at that time had to be marked with the country of origin. So early Lugers that were sent to the United States are Germany marked. Later on, some were captured in World War II and they came over without being Germany marked. That's obvious. But back then, they had to be Germany marked. So generally, these early Lugers that were sent in 30 caliber were rejected by the army, and the common theme was they weren't powerful enough. And so Germany, of course, was then making them in 9 millimeter. So 1903 and 1904, they sent a number of 9 millimeter. Now, we just sold one off the website. It has a B uh, uh, suffix, and it also has the GL, George Luger, um, initials on the back. So it's kind of a special gun that sold immediately. Uh, but that was in nine millimeter. It was one, uh, one of just a few test Lugers in nine millimeter. But once again, the U.S. Army rejected and said, we still want a more powerful caliber. Now, if you remember revolvers, even go, dating back to the Civil War, a lot of those are in 44 caliber, 45 caliber. The 45 caliber was the preferred cartridge. And so therefore, in 1907, Theoretically, Germany, uh, DWM, sent two 45 caliber Lugers to the United States. I say theoretically because that's also in dispute. People argue about that never happened, that's a myth. They sent two, but there's probably about 22 at this point because people have faked them. People have made fantasy guns, on not faking, but basically say, do you want a, do you want a Luger in 45 caliber? So they do show up from time to time. I believe there are two originals out there uh, maybe one of them was destroyed, but there, there may be one or two if it ever is found and published. Uh, we'll try to get it on our channel at Legacy Collectibles. So, going back to the overview, three categories of Lugers came over. 7.65 or 30 caliber, 9 millimeter, 45 caliber. All three were rejected, probably because they didn't want the supplier of the U.S. Army to be Germany. Uh, there was already rumblings of problems with Germany. And so eventually, obviously, 
they ended up adopting the 1911, and the rest is history, so to speak. They were in 45 caliber, and that design worked out very well for the U.S. Army. That design continues to this day. Okay, have you had enough of a history lesson? Now, where does this mystery gun fall into that big convoluted story I just told? Where does this fall in? Well, the owner of this gun, who, they sent it to me. It is going to be on sale. Uh, but he, he chose Legacy to make the sale and uh, with the understanding that we would do an educational video about this gun. Where does this fall into that timeline? Well, it is 30 caliber Luger. It does have the crest, the U.S. crest. Uh, it, however, it is Germany marked and that, that part uh, perplexes some people. I should say right off the bat, this has been written up on some of the collector forums. Actually, it's one of the longest threads ever published on the forum. Uh, people just arguing and disputing, where does this gun fall in? The thread is 14 pages long and if you go and read it, uh, it it'll have your uh, mind boggled just because there are so many experts with a lot of really good opinions and a lot of really good input. But the owner of this gun sincerely believes that this, remember I said there were two that were sent in March of 1901. We do have de documentation and the, it's actually, you can see here the documentation. This is copies of the original documents from the US War Department and the Springfield Armory that said uh, they ordered two guns on March about eight or nine. March eight or nine, they ordered two guns from Hans Tascher, who was the American agent for DWM, not like a secret agent, but he was the salesperson in charge. His territory was the United States. And so Hans Tascher was sent from Germany to promote these products. Retail, you know, they sold them in retail stores. Uh, the Luger caught on very quickly and he was in charge of sales. So the US Army contacts Hans Tascher and says, could you send us two of those newfangled Lugers that you have? They arrived two days later. So the order was put in eight or nine. They arrived on the 11th. And if you do the math, and actually I read this, I only got, got this because I was reading the comments on the forum. They couldn't have come from Germany. So that means that Hans Tascher, the salesman, already had these in stock. And he sent them over. They, they arrived two days later. And thus, the Germany stamp. Because people will point out, uh, experts, um, you know, Luger experts will say, well, the test eagles could not be Germany marked. But the first two would have been because they couldn't have gotten it from Germany that fast. And if it was imported for commercial sales, so here's the theory. This was imported for commercial sales and therefore Germany marked. But when the U.S. Army said, could you send us two? The owner believes, I'm parsing my words, the owner believes this is one of the two. There is no serial number to prove that. There's no record to prove that. The gun does date from early 1901, and it is possible that this is one of the two. Now, one of them, uh, it actually goes through how they tested it. They put it in a steam bath for 24 hours. It was completely rusted. They said the bolt was rusted shut. They pounded, they put oil on it. They pounded on it. They beat it up a whole lot. Um, and they got it working again. Then they put, they were very specific. They said, we put 21 rounds through it in 3.5 seconds. It was very detailed exactly what they did to the gun. By the way, they dipped it in salt water. They, they uh, steamed it. They pounded it. Uh, and, they, and they ended up putting it in acid and destroying it. So number one was destroyed. Could this be number two? Here's another problem with this, the ideal grips. So let's talk that, about that a little bit. Come on over and we'll take a closer look. Okay, I'm just now taking a closer look. You do see the 1900 dish toggle. You do see the early style safety. This is the, the uh, grip safety. Now, I believe, and the owner of this gun believes, that this was issued with the, tra the traditional checkered grip. Uh, obviously, they look like this. This is what most people are used to. Now, the patent date on the ideal uh, grips was actually 1901, but we believe that this was put on later. Uh, and the reason is that they really didn't start distributing them until later in 1902, uh, 1903, 1904. So certainly by 1904, this could have been added onto it, but I don't believe, well, going back to the theory about it was a commercial gun that he had in stock, commercial gun that he had in stock definitely would have had the checkered grips. However, the, these ideal grips were added later, not sure when. 
Um, the other thing that I wanted to show you, because people say, well, what makes you think this went to the Springfield Armory? Uh, you can see right here are Springfield proofs, Springfield flaming bombs. Now, one of the controversies are when was that put there? I can't tell you. There are different style flaming bombs. I just watched um, Morphe's auction this past weekend, and they sold this Test Eagle in the proper range without the Germany marking, and it also has a flaming bomb on it. Can't explain it, uh, but uh, the flaming bomb, they were even arguing about the, the year of the flaming bomb, when that was stamped. I can't really uh, be sure on any of that, but this is unique. It does have a flaming bomb. Uh, so there's no, uh, uh, more evidence. Um, the owner of the gun bought this at an auction in New Hampshire. It's a fairly large auction house that I actually frequent. And he bought this, uh, and they did not describe what happens when you take off the grip. So we're going to take off the grip. Actually, we'll take off both grips, and we'll show you what's inside. Let's do both sides. All right, so I take both grips off, and you see, lo and behold, the serial number of the gun, flaming bomb. Serial number of the gun, flaming bomb. Now, this is where things get dicey, because this is where people, either that's real or it's fake. <laughs> uh, owner is going to say, it's real. And by the way, the, whatever you own, that's real. And if somebody else owns it, it's fake. That's a joke. Don't anybody take that personally. He believes that's real. There were people who disputed that that was never done, can't be done. Well, same can be true of the Morphe's auction gun. That was never done. But my question would be, if, if there are textbooks and lots of books published on this is what an American Eagle test looks like, and they show you pictures, and there's no flaming bomb, then why would somebody put a flaming bomb in order to fake something that isn't supposed to be there according to all the experts? So, there it is. Also, there it is. Matching number, U.S. property. Now this, this is where the, the uh, original grip is attached. But the ideal gri grip, they, they have this metal insert, both sides. This metal insert is added on, and I'll, sh I'll put on the, uh, the uh, grip stock in a minute. So Springfield Armory, Springfield Armory, Springfield Armory, Springfield Armory, and Springfield Armory, U.S. property marked. So now we have to say, well, this is fake, this is fake, this is fake. That's hard to imagine. <laughs> it's hard to imagine that somebody faked all this, but I do get that this is not the original configuration. This was added sometime later, maybe by 1904. That's all conjecture on my part. I will interject at this point that this gun has been on display at the NRA Museum for several months, and they believe it's a very special gun that was one of the first test eagles uh, ever made. So again, two were sent in March. One of them was destroyed. We have no record of the serial number, but this is giving us evidence that this was part of some kind of a test with the U.S. Army. And just to be clear, none of this was in the description. The, the original seller or the auction house never took the grips off, and ne they, did, they did show these proof marks, but they never showed the inside of the grip. So when the owner bought this, and it arrived, imagine his surprise when he took it off and it says U.S. property. And then he, um, he stepped into the bee's nest and people got upset about it because they said that never happened, it shouldn't have happened, this, this can't be right. The owner bought this gun in 2013 from the auction house and he posted it on the, for, uh, on the forum and they discussed it for almost two years, uh, 2013, 2014. They discussed this in great detail. The thread was closed. Uh, he's, uh, he sent it to the uh, NRA Museum. It was on display there for uh, many months. So about seven years later, 2021, a man uh, gets on the forum and says, I bought this at a garage sale. Actually, not really a garage sale. It was an antique dealer, and it was a barn uh, full of antiques. And he picked it up. Uh, seven years later, 2021, and the post is on the forum. Uh, he said, I was, I was uh, trying to find out more information about what this is, and he said, I think it goes to a Luger. Uh, so he wrote to the Luger forum and said, I found this stock in a, um, in a garage. Now, the garage is in New Hampshire. He gave the name of the, the family, and it was the same family that sold this gun or sent this gun to the auction house. So I've seen this before because we've done estates before where people will send us their guns and then later on they'll call and say, 
Hey, out in the garage, I found boxes full of magazines and some of them match and boxes, that, the original boxes that came in. And so we have scrambled to contact the people who bought the gun and said, by the way, <laughs> seven years later, we found the matching box that goes to your gun. Well, this guy, again, antique dealer, he contacts the forum and says, can anybody tell me what this is? One of the astute forum members saw the serial number and said, aha. This came out of New Hampshire? Aha, was the name of the family that, yes, same family, this ideal stock matching this gun was found seven years later. Now, uh, on the other side, you will see the spring, again, that same flaming bomb, same serial number. I'm gonna show you how this works. It does say patent pending. Um, and by the way, uh, people who said this was all faked, they said, you can tell that this has been rubbed and therefore reapplied. Well, the antique dealer was smart enough to, to say, here's, he's, there's pictures of it, and, I, and if you're really interested in this gun, and it has to be more than just uh, wanting to annoy me, um, if you're really interested, I have the original post where he, he took a picture of it, and this is covered in rust, completely covered in rust. And he said, I left it exactly how it was. I took the pictures. And then he cleaned it all off and could, and could see that there's a serial number. So he, he said, I scrubbed it off. I have no intention of trying to defraud or fool anybody. I was merely cleaning off the rust. So let's put this, uh, I think it's an incredible story and it gives me goosebumps a little bit. And just to accent the point a little bit, all the ideal grips, if you look them up online, they didn't make very many. They, again, the patent, patent pending, that was uh, 1901. They were commercially available for a very short period of time, but they didn't catch on. Uh, therefore, the, it was the ideal holster company that made them. Uh, they kind of dropped it from their inventory because people didn't like it that much. But this one says U.S. property. I just realized there's another flaming bomb there. Flaming bomb there, flaming bomb there, flaming bombs on the gun, matching number to the gun. I, I, I hope it gives you goosebumps because it does for me too. Now, um, let me put this all together and show you how the uh, stock works and then we'll be done. Um, assuming you're still with me, let me show you the magazine as well. Of course, with everything this gun has going for it, the magazine. I, I have talked about how you can tell a magazine was restamped. This does look all original. It's begin to fade, but it is a matching magazine. And there is a tiny flaming bomb underneath it. Springfield Armory uh, mark or proof or symbol or logo. People correct me and say, it's not a proof mark. It's not that. It's not. Anyway, it's a flaming bomb and a matching number mag. Now, let's see how this all goes together. These are the ideal grips, which again, we're conjecturing were added later. You can see how the, that piece of metal is put in there, and that's the piece of metal that's numbered to the gun. And it allows uh, for this to click on. If you study Lugers or own Lugers, you know most of them have a stock lug. Uh, here's a stock lug. And all that you do is uh, most of them, again, uh, whether it's a broom handle or a Luger or any kind of gun, you just, it, it usually slides onto that stock lug. This ideal, and it's not because it's ideal, it's because it was made by the ideal holster company. All you do is insert that and it hooks in and it sits like this. Now, when you do that, you think, well, this is loose and floppy, and I just think it's a stupid design until you push this button and pull. Push the button and pull, and it, it telescopes out, and when you do that, it tightens it up. It's now tight. I wonder if there's any more bomb proofs around here anywhere. Nope. <laughs> Never know what you're going to find. Um, as I said before, I like this design a lot. This hooks onto your belt. You hooks onto your belt here, so you can, you can hold that like a holster. Let's close it up. You can't get this off until you close it back up again. And I said before, what I don't like about it is this for your shoulder because, you know, I, I just it's a piece of metal. If they had improved on that, you would have had me convinced. But as a holster, then this just slips right in here. And you see the cutout for the toggle and you just push it till it hits that. And then theoretically, you would put that on your belt and you walk around like a stud. And if you have flaming bombs and US property marked on it, it's worth some money. So there's the story. This is the mystery gun. 
Can I prove this is the one gun that remained from that first batch of two? I can't because the, the serial number is not recorded. Do I think it could be? Absolutely. I think this very well could be that one first American Eagle Luger. Um, and would I love to own it? Absolutely. But unfortunately, it's going to have to go to some other lucky soul. I think it's an important Luger, an important part of American history, as well as Luger history. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. Even if you don't like our channel, like and subscribe anyway.